Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Shiv and today we're going to be doing some high key photography. Uh, typically uh, high key is nothing more than making sure that the background is uh, pretty much white and that your subject is lit uh, perfectly in front of the white background. And then you can take it to the next level where even your subject could be just that little um, overexposed. Now in the studio, typically one would do a high key photography with a sheet of perspex, uh, you know, with a flash behind the sheet of perspex. And then you can use a secondary light or a primary light on your subject, which could be another flash or any other source of light that'll fall on the subject. Now, uh, Perspex may or may not be available these days. Um, I uh, have been fortunate. I actually took an old uh, slide viewer and, uh, you know, when its uh, days were numbered, uh, the fact that I wasn't shooting any more slides, um, I got rid of the box, but uh, kept the uh, top sheet, which is a perfect uh, for using as a high key background. So this is basically what I uh, typically end up using. Uh, and the lamps behind this were color corrected. It doesn't really matter anymore because, uh, you know, we can white balance and do all of that. But this would be in front of the flash and would make a perfectly uh, beautiful high key background. But what I'm going to do today is to create um, a little bit of a high key background that you can make at home with some uh, fairly simple uh, things. One of which you can get from Amazon or any other art store. Uh, order it online. Uh, they're not expensive, usually about a dollar or less than a dollar each. Get an 11 by 14 mat, which has a 8 by 10 cutout. Now, an 8x10 cutout is perfect for doing flower photography and things like that. And then you take some tracing paper, and I'll show you how to uh, place the tracing paper. And make two of these because one will be your background, and then the other can act as a diffuser for your key light. Let me show you uh, what we're going to use. Um, I have some scotch tape. I have tracing paper, and then I have two uh, mat boards. And these are basically going to be the frame for the tracing paper. So let me switch to the overhead view and uh, give you an idea of how I put all this together. So the first thing I do is, of course, separate the two frames. And I'll keep the beveled edge on top and flip it over so the beveled edge now is facing down on the table. I'll take one sheet of tracing paper Now you can always add more than one sheet if you need to have more diffusion um, but typically I think that one sheet would work perfectly well. And if it doesn't, we can always add some more. But um, I haven't done this before, so we're going to experiment together. Just add some scotch tape. I can see through uh, the tracing paper pretty well, so it might end up being a little bit uh, too transparent. And if that's the case, definitely one can add more uh, to it. But it, it may work, it may not work. So that's uh, the, the finished product. And uh, I'm going to create one more like this. Uh, to act as the diffusion for the second light source. All right, so I have uh, two of these ready 
And what I'm going to do is take one and suspend it in front of the uh, flash which I have behind. So here's the, the flash unit and the uh, mat with the paper is kind of centrally placed in front of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this second one that I've created and here's a second flash which I have, I'm going to be using that as the primary light that's going to fall on the subject. And I'm just going to clip this onto the third hand with two crocodile clips. It's just to keep it in place. And that basically will give me the light that I'm looking for, uh, for the, for the flash unit. Now, the, the next thing that we need to do is to make sure that we have uh, proper exposure. And to have proper exposure, what we need to make sure is that the background looks absolutely white and <clears throat> the uh, histogram does not climb up um, on the right hand side. So you don't want any clipping. A slight amount of clipping is not going to be problematic, but if it clips too much, means you're going to get a lot of excess light coming through uh, from the back, <clears throat> and that's going to backlight the subject excessively. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, what you want is just a white background, not a bright light coming through it. If you want that type of photography, then it's probably easier if you use a light box and have a powerful light coming through the diffusion material of the light box. So let's uh, set the exposure to what we want. The first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to assume that the subject that I'm going to photograph will require about between f10, f11. So let's just set it to um, f11. And I'm going to set my shutter speed to be about 100. And 60, which would be about a sync speed, but I'll keep it at about 1 1 25th of a second uh, just to see if I'm getting a lot of ambient light. If, if I am, then I will take it up further. Um, turn the flash on at the back only. Look at the preview. Okay, we're going to take a test shot and uh, make sure that the histogram is as far to the right as possible without really clipping because what you don't want is uh, an exposure that is so high that yes it is going to look white but then you're going to have a lot of light coming through the back and uh, that's actually going to become problematic uh, for the subject that you're shooting because even though you may enjoy, uh, you know, looking at the very bright background, uh, the light passing through the uh, flowers or whatever your subject is, if it is uh, translucent, uh, could in fact deter from the way you want to photograph the subject. So uh, let's just have a look at uh, the test shot. And yes, it's uh, nice and white but definitely one needs to make sure that the uh, preview is perfect and as you can see the histogram is pretty much all the way to the right there's a little bit a very very slight amount of uh, overexposure but i think that is not too bad so the settings are really f11 um, iso 100 1 1 25th of a second and that is with a single flash at the back. Now we can arrange our subject and uh, take some pictures. All right, so now I have the flower, which is a carnation. Uh, it's a little wilted, but uh, anyway, uh, with all the ambient light, 
um, you can see that we have pretty good exposure. So when we fire the flash behind the flower uh, to get that high key background, what we should see is a perfect silhouette. Uh, what you want is enough light to come out from the back to make the flower go into total silhouette and we should be able to see the exposure pretty much the same as we had uh, without the flower in place. So let's take a test shot with that. And as you can see, uh, the quick preview uh, showed it to be nothing more than just an absolute black flower. Uh, let's just do a full preview and give you an idea. So as we can see, um, the exposure is pretty much similar to what it was. You are getting some light from the front on the flower. So you are seeing the flower actually reflect some of the ambient light. Um, which is being captured by the camera, but most of it is in total silhouette, and that's because of the flash firing from behind. Now, the flash power at the back is 1128th on a uh, Godox V860 uh, flash unit. Now, to capture the actual image, what I now need to do is to turn on the flash that is in front of the flower, which would be uh, the flash in front of the board. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to turn that on. I don't know if you can get a visual of the second flash unit. Um, let me see if I can put another view on there for you. So I've uh, set another camera up to give you an idea of what's going on. So this here is another Godox V860. Um, there's one Godox behind the flower, as you saw before. And then this particular uh, frame or mat board with the uh, you know, tracing paper is basically acting as a diffuser for the flash in front. Now, you don't have to have a diffuser like this, but it's, uh, it's interesting. If you need to add more diffusion to the back, you can just take this card and double it up with the one that we have. So let me turn this flash on. All right, now with uh, both the flashes on and positioned uh, properly, uh, let's just take an image. And as you can see from the preview, we have a pretty decent capture. There we go. Um, a little bit on the underexposed side, which would mean I need to up the exposure uh, or up the flash power on the uh, front flash, which I can do right here and increase it. And take another shot. Yeah, much better. So let's just look at this image <clears throat> and also look at the histogram to give you an idea. Yep, perfect. We have uh, nothing clipping on no blocked up shadows and the histogram is writing up exactly as it was prior to uh, introducing the second flash. So we have good exposure. We have a perfectly high key background. Now with this setup, I don't have to really change anything. And I can now just add uh, additional flowers, uh, compose them any way that I want and uh, keep shooting. Here are some examples of uh, flowers that I've uh, photographed using the setup that we just created. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's really 
uh, a lot of fun doing this and uh, I hope you are uh, gleaning uh, something from these episodes. Uh, and do please let me know if there's something that uh, you'd like me to create and show you. Uh, I'd love to do that. Um, in the meantime, if you have enjoyed this particular episode, please uh, do uh, give it a thumbs up. And, uh, you know, please do subscribe. It's, uh, you know, going to uh, only, you know, accumulate more uh, videos and more information and uh, we can learn together. So uh, do subscribe and when you do hit that notification icon so uh, you get notified of future episodes. So with that, uh, please do look after yourselves, take care, be well and be safe. And I will see you in the next episode.